What's up, guys? It's Even10 here. And I bet you guys are wondering, just like I was um, for the longest time, what the heck is a Higgs anchor rig used for? Now, there's for they go from small all the way up to uh, capital size, as you'll see here. When we do a search for the Higgs anchor, there's small all the way up to capital. And for the longest time, I'm like, what the heck are these things used for? I stumbled across it when I was fitting a lot of different ships over my last year or so playing EVE Online. I noticed that a bunch of stats would turn red, and I'm like, why would I ever use this rig if it's just going to make me slower and less efficient at what I want to do? Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. There's actually some great benefits to using a Higgs anchor, and it actually might change my mind on some of the way I view fittings for especially like the barge and the, and the exhumers or even the orca. Uh, but it does have various uses for different play styles. And again, just like in my orca video, it really comes down to, to your personal play style. Some people swear this is the best thing that's ever happened to uh, industrial ships. But then again, like I said before, it really comes down to play style. So I'm going to do my best to try and keep this, uh, as Winston, Winston Churchill once said, uh, you know, long enough to kind of cover the subject matter, but also short enough to uh, keep things interesting. For some reason, YouTube absolutely hates videos that I post that are less than like eight to 12 minutes long. So I'm going to keep it kind of in that range, if not a tad bit longer. But whenever I keep a video super short, um, cause there's honestly not a ton of stuff to cover, but there is a lot of stuff to show you guys. So we'll go ahead and get into it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is actually look at the HIG anchor statistic. But before we do that, one very minor thing, which is kind of a big deal. The calibration cost for this, uh, rig only costs 25. So there is no like T2 version of the Higgs anchor. It's always going to be a technically like a T1 version. Um, but it's a very, very tiny cost. Most ships have a calibration cost of 400, meaning you can only f fit in 400 calibration points worth of uh, rigs into your um, ship. But th because this is so tiny, you can actually fit some really, really expensive um, calibration like rigs into your fit, especially some that cost anywhere between like uh, 250 to like 350 at times, and it covers up almost this whole thing. So the Higgs anchor is a nice fit uh, for some of these ships. So that is kind of one nice aside. Looking at the info, there are three different stats that are affected, but I'm actually going to lump two of them together, which is the inertia modifier and the velocity modifier, just because those play off each other really well, uh, as well as the mass. So the first thing I'm actually going to focus on is the mass, because this actually doubles the size uh, of your mass, making you a very big and a very heavy ship. So I actually already turned off our uh, micro warp drive because that also increases our mass. So as we turn this off, you'll notice our mass goes down. If we turn it back uh, on. It's actually going to be increasing up to 300,000 from 150,000. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the benefits, at least in my opinion, when it comes to having an increased size uh, on your Orca or whether it's your mining barge as well as your Exhumer. All right. And one of the biggest benefits of having an increased mass is you actually get bumped um, not as far if you were hit by another ship. So basically, the more mass you have, the kind of the quote unquote heavier you are and the further and the less further, or I should say, less far you'll get flung if you do get hit. So just to be consistent, I actually have my alt here and an omen with a 500 MN micro warp drive slapped on here. So it's going to be moving uh, pretty quick with a very large um, ability to a bump the orca that just bump the crap out of it. And just to be consistent with kind of our measuring here, I just dropped a uh, cargo can uh, cargo container like right next to the orca just so we can see how far we are flung um, as we are doing this. So we're going to go ahead and click approach on our orca, turn on that micro warp drive, and I'm sure I'll get bumped in no time. But uh, for this instance, we actually don't have the um, Higgs anchor equipped in the rig slot, and we don't have our micro warp drive on. So you're going to be able to see how far we are flung without actually having the Higgs anchor um, on the ship. So you're going to notice a huge difference uh, between these two. And as you can see, I probably should have done this <laughs> towards the beginning, but our Omen is really picking up speed right now. And now we are going to get bumped. And I'm curious to see how far we get flung. And we are getting flung a pretty good distance. So right now we're at the point I turn off my micro warp drive, but we'll go ahead and keep bumping ourselves because that's what's going to be happening. So it looks like we're going to land around the, because right now we're actually moving at well over a thousand meters a second. And we're still moving away. And we got bumped again. And so as you can see, the container is just getting further and further away. All right, now on take two with the annoying omen, except this time around, we actually have the Higgs anchor. So one interesting thing, we'll go ahead and start approaching. So it's the same thing again. We have the um, 
the cargo container right next to us and our guy is a hundred kilometers off or I should say hundred kilometers and so we'll go ahead and get started on that but in the meantime if you're actually looking at this not only does the Higgs anchor double the mass of the ship but it also doubles the mass of when you turn on your micro warp drive because usually that only gives you 50,000 now it's giving me a hundred thousand so now we are a very big ship so I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn this on right now so our mass should be huge uh, when I watched the video previously, our ARCA was moving about 2,500 meters a second immediately after the bump. So I'm curious to see how much slower we're going to go and how much uh, less of a distance we're going to be going once we get hit here. So we get bumped and we actually moved about half as far. We only moved about 1,200 or so. And I remember last time what we were getting pushed at this point, um, I don't know, like 30 or 40 uh kilometers away now we're only at like 12 or 13 so this is a pretty effective way to actually start not necessarily counter bumpers but make it much less effective and give time for your drones to actually head back to you if you just leave this uh, micro warp drive on and once your drones get back um you should be fine and on top of that once you do eventually get your drones back in your bay they there is a mechanic that ccp implemented that once you actually start aligning or once you actually start initiating warp to a certain uh, station or a gate or whatever it may be you will automatically warp there uh, within three minutes i believe uh, until you're finally at your destination and no matter how much bumping they do they can't stop you from that three minute warp another reason actually having a very large uh, mass on your ship is mostly and i'm this is what i mentioned before about kind of like more niche play styles is mostly for worm holders so whenever there's a wormhole that typically has like a a static wormhole that always leads to high sec or null sec whatever it may be uh if that wormhole goes to a part of space they don't like they're gonna have to do what's called rolling and i don't want to get too much in the mechanics of it there's way more information than i could ever provide uh to you guys but essentially a wormhole can only take so much mass in and out of it before it eventually closes and goes to somewhere else. So wormholers, typically what they do is if it goes to a part of space that they don't like, they usually send a very large ship with a Higgs anchor on it to basically cut the time in half it takes for it to, to go through the hole um, there and back. And there is a way that they can determine how much mass is needed to kind of uh, finish off the hole so they don't get stuck on the other side, which is a whole thing that they have figured out, which I don't. But that is another reason why people use uh, Higgs anchors is to actually um roll wormholes and and trying to figure out and basically cut the amount of passes they need to get through it uh by half all right and now looking at the second part of the higgs anchor and i one thing i did forget to mention that the drawback for this ship is your um maximum uh, warp speed is reduced by 10 percent. so as you can see here when we turn it off it goes to 2.0 if we turn it back on uh it should be 1.8 but i do have uh rigging skills that help reduce like the drawbacks of this type of rig so just letting you guys know that. So this fit is definitely not meant for any kind of like long distance travel. If anything, it's probably better you just take it off, take those uh, 15, 20, 30, 40 jumps, whatever you need to do um, in the Orca with this thing off because it's just going to make you travel 10% slower. Luckily, this rig is pretty cheap. It's only like 10. It's definitely under 10 million uh, in GDA, at least as the time of making of this video. So looking at the attributes, the inertia modifier and velocity modifier, I put these together because they work really well um, with one another. If the inertia modifier was also negative 75%, it would be kind of a wash, meaning like this rig would kind of absolutely do nothing for you other than just being kind of like a bump deterrent or a way to kind of combat bumping. But for the most part is, like I mentioned before with this uh, fit, in order to enter warp, but I mentioned this in my other videos, you actually need to hit 75% of your maximum speed. So with the Higgs anchor on it, so before with the Orca without the, the Higgs anchor, we would have to basically be moving like 56 meters in order to enter warp. But with the Higgs anchor, we only need to move about, I'm going to do the math on that, probably about 12, maybe 13 in order to enter warp. So we're moving very slow, but we also don't need to move very fast to enter warp as well. It's probably easier if I just show you. All right. And to be honest, I was way too lazy to go find a mining belt. I will say if you're going to be using this technique of uh, using a Higgs anchor, you need to be very good with your bookmarks. I'm talking like... If you warp into a belt, because you're moving so slow, as you can see, our maximum speed on our uh, retriever here is now only 24. Um, the, both of these ships have a Higgs anchor, including the Orca, and our Orca at max speed can only move at 18 meters a second. So the whole point of this fit, or I should say the whole point of the rig, is that you're able to instantly hit warp while moving very slow. So imagine that you're slowly uh, slow boating around the edge of this asteroid and mining the ships. Um, if you're not sure where the point is for the 75%, there's actually little tick marks down here. It's very hard to see, but there's very small tick marks down here in the um, 
the acceleration thing here. And I'm actually aligning both of my ships to this uh, planet. And imagine that you're just, both of your ships are just very slowly going around this asteroid belt and mining everything up. And let's say some ships show up on grid and all you need to really do, especially if you're moving at 75% speed, all you have to do, and let's see if I can get the fleet warp to work here, uh, is be able to instantly hit warp. And at that point, you have everything between an orca and a retriever both hitting warp at the exact same time. Um, just make sure that obviously you're aligned um, and because you're moving so slow, you shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be that likely that you're moving out of range of an asteroid. And if you are, you can always turn around and just start aligning to something else. As long as you're just aligning to somewhere to get the heck out of there, um, you should be relatively safe. But of course, if you're doing this setup, assuming that you're going to be, you know, mining in low or null sec, and you're going to jump through multiple gates in order to get away, that warp speed, um, that like warp speed penalty will slow you down and they will eventually catch up to you and bubble you or whatever it is. So it's mostly one of those things where it's like, it's just going to help you in system and get immediately into a station or at least to a spot that's relatively safe. It's not going to help you if you're going to be jumping multiple uh, jumps away in order to get away from your assailants. All right, so we'll go ahead and do it uh, again one more time here. We'll go ahead and click align to uh, our station here. And in order to like max out your speed at 75%, not go any higher, you can go ahead and just click down here where the current speed option is. And there's that third tick mark that I was talking about. That's where we're at 75% speed. Um, if we go any higher than that, we're gonna be drifting away from our asteroid even further because you can do this without a Higgs anchor, but because of that increased speed, I mean, we would be moving 75% faster on both of these ships. Um, we would be drifting away from our asteroid very quickly and we'd have to be realigning and micromanaging um, pretty hard. And strangely enough, this is one of the few times that you actually don't want to have like increased speed, like actually having higher acceleration kind of sucks because you're actually moving away, even if it's an extra meter or two or second um, can kind of suck. But let's go ahead and do uh, another fleet warp and immediately go here. And this is what I mean about actually being really good with your bookmarks. So it actually might be worthwhile to make a insta dock on a station, especially if you're in a system you mine in a lot, because as you'll see here, we'll go ahead and land on this um, the station at zero. But because our heavily reduced speed, if we land a little bit further away and we don't get that docking access like immediately, like we might be slow boating for a while and we could get caught. So this is what I mean about having um, bookmarks that are set up because if you warp to a belt, you're gonna have to slow boat all the way to the asteroid. And same thing here, if you don't have a proper like Insta dock bookmark on a station, you're gonna be slow boating all the way from the edge of this um, station. And during this whole time, you, you will be vulnerable. And yeah, I would say those are pretty much the three main appeals of the Higgs anchor. The first one being that it takes you half as much time to roll wormholes. The second one, the increased mass makes you much less susceptible to bumping. So you're not bumped as far. Um, you're able to recall your drone sooner. And that way you can actually start getting into warp uh, that much easier and not have to deal with griefers uh, for as long. And the third reason, as you guys just saw right there, is that you're basically able to instantly hit warp because you're moving so slow along the side of the rocks. You should be able to finish off some of the asteroids before you're out of range of it. And if trouble does show up, you're able to instantly hit warp um, and not have to worry about uh, getting ganked. And I try to find some more uh, niche uses for the Higgs anchor. At least I looked online a lot of the times and there's actually not that much information on the Higgs anchor and kind of like uh, alternative uses. One person I did see mention that they sometimes use it on like their art artillery battleship. So they he thinks it kind of makes them drop out of warp sooner because you're a bigger and heavier ship. You, you have to spend less time actually slowing down and dropping out of warp because he was using like 1400 artillery, um, like auto cannon. So that way he can start sniping ships sooner. I don't know the validity of that. I, I didn't bother testing that. And the other thing too is uh, something that, and I would believe this is probably true, is that uh, carriers and marauders tend to use it to instantly align. So whether you're ratting or running level four missions and everything's like in a single pocket or something like that, um, you're able to slowly align to somewhere while you're riding and doing all this stuff. But if something does show up, um, you can always insta work. But then again, I mean, you can do that anyway without the Higgs anchor. So uh, I'll, I'll be curious to know if I overlooked anything about the Higgs anchor, if you guys use it personally, what are some other alternative uses that I, you know, other than I mentioned below, uh, I would love to hear that down in the comments below. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll be honest, the appeal of the Higgs anchor has really grown on me. Before, I thought it was just kind of this meme thing or it was a very niche use for like wormholing. But uh, it definitely has a place when it comes to uh, fleet industrial mining or whether you're doing it solo. solo. Uh, the ability to basically able to like insta warp out is a very valuable thing. 
it does make it a slightly more micromanagey because you're always going to be drifting away from something and you kind of have to manage that as well. But um, it, it could be worth it for the most part, especially if you're flying something really expensive uh, like an Orca or some of the Exumer class uh, ships as well. So um, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I am I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I forgot to mention that uh, earlier in the video uh, for two or three of the Mauler Scope Syndication skins. I think I forgot to give one away in the last video, so I'll go ahead and give away an extra one for this video but i would love to see down in the comments obviously your in-game name and two if you guys learn anything about the higgs anchor or um, if there's any other alternative uses you need uh that you kind of like learned about or that you use the higgs anchor for as well i would love to see that down in the comments below so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and of course fly safe